Coming up on iOS Today, or should I say PiOS Today, <laughs> we have a great show planned for you. It's about keeping track of your lists with iOS. List apps to help you keep track of those little items. And of course, it's Rosemary Orchard and yours truly, Micah Sargent, back in the saddle. Stay tuned for this episode of iOS Today. Podcasts you love. From people you trust. This is Twit. This is iOS Today, episode 694 with Rosemary Orchard and Micah Sargent, recorded Tuesday, March 12th, 2024, for Thursday, March 14th, 2024. Keep track of your lists with iOS. Hello and welcome back to iOS Today, the show where we talk all things iOS, tvOS, watchOS, HomePodOS, iPadOS, VisionOS, and all the OSs in between. Woo! We love to talk about the mirror on this show, and we love to help you make the most of your Apple devices. Uh, I have been in uh, jury duty stuff for a while. So it's really good to be back on the show uh, with my wonderful, amazing, talented co-host, Rosemary Orchard. Hello, Rosemary. Well, hello, Micah. And as lovely as it was having James Thompson on the show, which if folks missed, they should go back and check out those two episodes. Uh, it's really good to have you back. I missed you. Oh, I missed you too. And yes, thank you, James, so much. You did a fantastic job filling in for me. And I think those episodes were jam-packed with some great information. So, uh, without further ado, let's get into this episode, which is all about keeping track of items using lists. So I'm going to kind of talk at the end a little bit about the Notes app for iOS that does provide some list options. But here's an interesting thing. I And Rosemary, correct me if I'm wrong here, but something that I've noticed is that uh, when a developer... A, a, a blossoming, budding developer is learning how to code for iOS specifically, or you know, iPad OS. Uh, one of the first things that they do is make an app that is essentially some sort of list style app. And that is because there is a lot of baked in functionality for creating mm -hmm. lists of items in the code uh, behind our iOS, iPad OS apps. But even though that is one of the first apps that gets made. What's difficult is making an app that sticks around and is downloaded mm -hmm. by a lot of people and is good and provides extra functionality. And so finding good list apps is actually kind of difficult because there's a huge bunch of those list apps out there. Uh, so I'm yeah. curious to hear uh, a little of your take on list apps and perhaps we'll talk about some of your favorites. Yeah. So, I mean, a list of things, it's what just, you know, you start at one and you go to two, three, four and five and so on. And that's all very well and good until you want to put something in like between two and three, at which point you have to move, you know, everything that was, you know, three, three goes to four, four goes to five and so on and so forth. And that's where lists get a little bit more difficult from a development standpoint. But that's also where just using something like a sheet of paper gets a bit messy. You know, you check something off um, and you want it to go to the bottom. But then, oops, that was an accident. I unchecked it by accident or I checked it by accident. I want to uncheck it. Do you want it to go back in where it was or not? And there are lists for a whole bunch of things. And I've been looking at a couple of different apps actually on iOS recently um, for, you know, keeping track of, you know, various kinds of lists. And I'm going to start with a great little app, which uh, is available on the App Store uh, for $2.99 and it's called Play. So I know that YouTube has a built in watch list feature. But I feel like 99% of the time when I go to try and save something to my YouTube watch later list, it just kind of like goes, oh, wait, but you're not logged in. I need you to re-log in and re-authenticate and do stuff. And then it makes the video disappear. And so I have to go back and, and all of those things. And I can't really categorize stuff. You know, I can make playlists, but it, do, it just the way I want it to. Play is called Play, Save Videos, Watch Later. It's two ninety nine, and its purpose is to allow you to add not just individual videos, which you can do um, here, but you can also add entire channels 
into the Ooh. app so that you can follow a whole channel. So for example, um, I have been watching uh, a bit of Adventures with Purpose and I have my inbox here. Um, so if I go to my channels in the app, then I can see, and I've got Adventures with Purpose, and I can see that there are 12 new videos and I can just tap and hold on that and then add all videos, which I, yeah, I'm very, I'm very lazy. I like uh, <laughs> using that approach. Um, but what this does is it then automatically just adds all of these into my watch later list so that I can see, and then I, I can see them and then I can sort them, but I can sort them by the date that I added them to the list, the date that they were published, um, the date that I watched them, if they're in, if I've watched them, their title, the channel they're on, their duration, the rating, and I can obviously go from newest to oldest first. So if I'm looking for something really short, then I could swap this and put shortest first. And look, I can see there's an 18 second video there. Perfect. You know, I've got very little time, 18 seconds, 30 seconds. That's exactly what I'm after. Or maybe I actually want to look at things by channel. Um, and now I can see that, you know, there's uh, some things from CGP Grey here, things from Clutterbug um, and all sorts of stuff. And I like the way that I can go through this here. Now I can also um, add uh, a tag uh, to things as well um, so that I can actually uh, set, set it up so that things are also tagged. But there are a lot of uh, little nifty bits that are in here. So obviously you can do things like just change the tint color. So if you don't associate red with YouTube, you could change it to be blue or green if green is your favorite color, like Micah. Uh, you can have shake to watch. So you can just literally shake your phone. Uh, I'm shaking it here, uh, but obviously I don't have the feature turned on and it'll pick a random video for you to watch. Great nice, when like you just shuffle. want, you know, like a lottery feature. You can cho choose to show a badge count. So show the number of unwatched videos oh, no, thank in the you. app. <laughs> uh, yeah, exactly. I have that turned off. You can also sync all this via iCloud. And that is pretty important because this app, it's not just on your iPhone. It's also on your iPad and your Mac and your Apple TV. So you can save Ooh. all of these videos to watch later in various places. You can set it up with tags. You can do auto tagging um, for things as well. So you can say, hey, um, I am going to create a new tag and I'm going to call this uh, education and I'm going to give that a blue color um, and I'm going to save that. And I can say when the title uh, contains or I could even change that. So when the channel contains, maybe when the channel contains CGP, there we go, then automatically tag it with education. Uh, I usually learn something for a CGP grade video. Um, uh, and so there's that. And this applies then to all of the things that you, all of the videos that you have in here, whenever you add them. So you don't have to go in and add tags um, as you want. Um, you can also choose, um, so for example, when you watch a video, if it automatically marks it as watched um, and how it watches it, does it watch it in uh, the app? Does it go out to Safari to watch it? Does it uh, watch it in Firefox? Um, so native app is something like, you know, YouTube or so on. And of course, this doesn't just work for YouTube. It works for other things as well. So you can save a whole bunch of videos here. And yes, it has shortcut support. Of course it does, because I'm that kind of nerd. Um, but you don't have to use shortcut support. One thing I do really love here, okay, and this is one of the things that makes this not just a, a good list app, for playing things is when I tap on the plus, there is an add multiple videos. I can import from a playlist or, and things like that, but I can just paste in like 20 video URLs. Maybe I've been throwing them into notes and I want to catch up on them later um, and put them all in here. I can just paste all of them in here and it'll parse them out and bam, add all of them to my list and done. Very simple. Um, so yeah, it's, it's a very neat little app. It's a small app in many ways, but I have to say it is really useful for me. Um, there's also possibilities instead of viewing this as a, a, a grid, you can view it as a dense grid. So that's three across instead of two across on my iPhone. You can view it as a list instead, and you can also view it as a dense list. So that just gives you more vision of the titles um, and so on. There's also uh, the ability in things like your all view or a specific tag views to filter out watched ones. Uh, I tend to delete the watched videos when I'm done with them, unless I want to save them into some other system. Uh, so I don't have any watched videos in here, but this is a uh, play uh, available in the app store for $2.99. And honestly, it's really handy for just keeping track of the videos that you want to watch later. And um, that's what yeah. I love about it. This is awesome. Once you said Apple TV, I was sold because that is, yeah. I don't even, I don't, I rarely watch, 
videos on my Apple TV outside of, you know, media that I'm watching, but this would potentially make me watch it more because I find the YouTube browsing experience on Apple TV to be absolutely atrocious. So knowing that I could just go to this one place and view the videos that I actually want to see, because I'm not I'm not a huge video watcher in the first place, uh, mostly because of my ADHD. I get impatient <laughs> sitting there watching a video, <laughs> waiting, whoops, waiting for them to get to the point. Um, and so I, what I do is I'll save it for later whenever I do feel like I'm in the mood for it. And the way that I save it for later, it would not sync it to my Apple TV. So thank you for this app. I will absolutely be using this. Uh, in fact, I've already bought it and it's installed on my Mac. <laughs> uh, just and of course, uh, bonus, bonus little feature. If you have the Apple TV home screen sync on as well, and automatically downloading uh, apps to your Apple TV, uh, then if you have more than one Apple TV, it'll appear in the same place on both. And if you automatically download apps, it'll just appear there. I actually went back in and turned that on the other day because I realized that there was some Apple TV versions of some great apps I was missing out on, like Play. So uh, yeah, I turned that feature back on. And this is um, from the yeah. the developer who makes the incredible app called Music Harbor, all one word, Music Harbor. Mm -hmm. And I use Music Harbor because what that app lets you do, uh, and it's a little off topic, but it is an app that helps you keep track of when your artists release new music. And so if you've got more than one artist you like listening to, as I do, uh, I'm not able to keep up with all of them and know exactly when a new album releases that's, you know, relegated to a few. What? I was quoted on there. <laughs> That's funny. Um, this is Iowa today, Micah Sergeant. What? Uh, that sounds like me. I say folks a lot. Anyway, um, so this app is, it's so helpful in finding new music. And the fact that the Music Harbor uh, developer makes uh, play as well, it makes sense. It, it clicks in my mind. Mm -hmm. All right. Yeah. And yes, uh, I am going to give him a little bonus shout out. If you're thinking like, oh, that sounds great, but I just like something like this for like audio music. He has an app called Music Box for saving music for later as well. Nice. Uh, so, yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's also available on all the platforms. So, yes. Uh, also, I have spoken about Music Smart, which gives you like liner notes from albums from him before here on the show. So, yeah, definitely check out his apps because there's all sorts of good stuff over there. Um, Let's yeah. send some attention um, that way. Be great. Yeah. So I am going to stick with the media theme uh, because, um, you know, there's more to life than just videos, you know, keeping track of the TV shows you want to watch next um, or the films that you were intending on watching and so on. That is something that can be a little tricky. And there are a huge number of apps and services for this out there. Um, but one of the ones that I have been playing with a lot recently, which I'm really enjoying, is SQL. So SQL uh, is uh, an app. It's free to download and try out. And then there is an in-app subscription uh, to uh, get all of the uh, features. Uh, so uh, I believe it's uh, $2.99 a month or $20 a year. And there's also a family plan as well. But what you can do with uh, SQL is you can save movies, uh, series, games, books, and audiobooks into your play later. Um, so this is similar to Sofa that I've talked about here on the show before, also a great app. Um, so I'm going to uh, put movies in and there we go. So it's got some nice suggestions of some things that are coming up. So there's a new Ghostbusters film, Frozen Empire, coming out in 10 days. Um, and then they've got some trending, which includes some recent releases. And I think I'm going to put the Kung Fu Panda on my movies list. There we go. It's now on my watch list and I could change it and mark it as watched, uh, etc. if I would like to. Uh, and that is as simple as it gets. So now in movies, I can see that I have Kung Fu Panda. I could also go ahead and add Age of uh, Adeline, which is a film that I've been hearing a lot about recently, which is strange because it came out in 2015. Um, but I've been hearing so much about it that yesterday I actually went ahead and I watched it uh, and I really enjoyed it. And I can now rate it here in the app. So I can, uh, you know, give it my own personal uh, rating. I'll give it four stars. I don't know what five stars is in a movie thing movies context <laughs> movies for me I, I i like the thumbs up thumbs, thumbs down up, thumb, system yep, i know same. with music i i prefer having a bit more granular control but with films it's usually like i like it or i didn't like it um so now i can see this uh in my in my watched 
uh, options and I can also create collections. So for example, I might want like films to watch with kids or films to watch with my parents and things like that. Um, and it's just a very uh, nice way of, uh, you know, creating uh a list of things to watch later. Uh, so one thing I've been hearing a lot about uh, recently is lessons in chemistry. Uh, so there is a series on Apple TV, which I have watched and I highly recommend. It's very enjoyable. Um, but there is also a book, uh, Lessons in Chemistry, which I'm putting on my to-read list. Uh, and now uh, I will just uh, pop over to this one and I can then mark that as watched because I have watched that entire series recently. Um, and this is just a very simple little app for keeping track of all of the things that you might like to watch, read, or consume later. Because there's so many things out there, keeping track of all of that is pretty difficult. And so now, you know, if I want to watch, Kung, you know, if I want to look for films to watch, I can pop in and see, hey, Kung Fu Panda is on my watch list. I guess I'll give that a watch next. <laughs> nice. Yeah, that's, again, with when it comes to that, having one place to go for the media that you've been meaning to uh, enjoy. It's, it's really nice to, to kind of keep track of that. Um, now, let's, let's kind of, I guess, pivot a little bit. And this is where I think um, notes will particularly come into play uh, with these next two that are on your list. So uh, I'm glad you kind of organize these as you have so that I can show how you can do some of the stuff that you're about to talk about in notes, but you get to see the more powerful, more purpose-built apps first and foremost. Mm -hmm. Well, next up I'm going to talk about is an app that I'm sure uh, several people have looked for uh, and several people will say, hey, Rose, you can do that in Reminders. Grocery. Now, Reminders in a, a couple of years ago added uh, a, a feature for shopping lists where you can sort of automatically organize things um, uh, within you know your shopping list for, for different aisles and so on. But it's pretty rigid. It only you have a particular setup of uh, your store and you know you can't say hey uh, I want to move this into here and it doesn't always remember it if you do there is a whole bunch of things that you may want more of and that is where a grocery comes into play um, so essentially it is intended to not just be a shopping app but it also uh, will allow you to store recipes in here and do meal planning um, and then from there, you can uh, also build an inventory of things that you have in stock. So for example, I have apple juice in stock and I can choose what aisle this goes in so that I remember it. Um, and so I put that under beverages. That's very simple. I currently have three of those in stock um, and uh, I, I can turn on keep in stock, which means that whenever I use one up and I mark it as used, it will then add it back to my list uh, for me. And this is where it, it gets really nice. So I've got, for example, oven cleaner on my list here. Now, if I tap on the three dots on the right hand side, um, there are a couple of different things that I uh, can do. I can show it in my inventory. I can mark it as in stock. I can postpone this to the next trip. So I can say, hey, I still want to get this, but the store I'm going to today is not going to have this, Like, but just get rid of this for now. Um, I can set an expiration date at a price to, to, to remember how much it cost me. And I can also change the aisle. Um, and so there's a bunch of default aisles. So you, you've got bakery, bakery and bed, bread, uh, frozen things, fruits and vegetables, home and health, etc. cetera. Um, and then you can also edit your aisles. And what I love about this is when you edit your aisles, it's not just that you are saying like, oh, hey, there's another aisle called cake because I'm going to the supermarket, it's got cake. Um, you can also rearrange things so that it remembers you know, where things are based on the store that you're going to. So Michaelis's store has the bakery right as you go in the door. And then it has uh, fruits and vegetables right after that. Uh, then it's got like meats and seafoods, uh, eggs and dairy and so on and so forth. And so I can uh, say that, but I can also uh, copy it and I can uh, create layouts for different stores. So I can have uh, a couple of different stores. So I could uh, create this. I'll just call it store two uh, for now because uh, I, I'm not going to create one that I'm actually going to remember. And I can import things uh, from different reminders lists uh, and it will automatically import if you would like it to. Um, and then it can sort things. It can uh, include other stores. You can specify a location and one of the things I really love about this is when I am shopping um, and I'm, I'm going around and I've been checking a couple of things off um, and I'm just going to enable it for all stores because I actually want things to automatically 
be uh, enabled. It will actually, uh, it's not do it right now, but it will actually create a live activity on your lock screen. Okay, so if you lock your phone as you're going around the supermarket, then you can pick up your phone and on the lock screen where the notifications are, it'll show you a nice live activity of your shopping list with your unchecked items, which will be going from top to bottom based on the aisles that you ordered uh, in the app. So I feel like this is just a really nice way of taking, there could be, you know, a default way of doing this, but there's a really nice way to expand this with groceries. Um, they also have things like barcode scanning. So you can scan a barcode uh, to add uh, things as well. And of course, just adding items. And my favorite part, it imports from a Siri, uh, like a reminders list. So you can add things through reminders, which includes through your HomePod or uh, Siri and, and Apple Watch and whatever systems. And then they just get slurped up into grocery and bam, get turned into a really nice organized shopping list for you. Nice. Yeah. And again, that is a powerful tool that has all of that built in as opposed to kind of using a more basic list option that because I think sometimes people might go, well, I've got this all in one tool and all in one tools can be great. But when you find that purpose built tool, I find that it's it's exactly what I need to the point that I'm willing to go to it to use it instead of using that all-in-one tool. Uh, what about, and this is, I, I like this as a little bit of foreshadowing to our next episode. Um, what about if I am gearing up for travel and I want to make sure I have everything with me? Well, if you're going on a trip, Micah, then you probably want to uh, plan it in advance and make a list of stuff to take with you. Uh, nothing worse than going on a trip and realizing at the last minute you forgot your socks, right? Or you forgot, uh, you know, your swimsuit, but there's a swimming pool and you have to buy emergency swimwear and it costs five times emergency the price. Ah, so frustrating. Uh, so what uh, this app is, it's called Packer, P-A-C-K-R, and it's a travel packing list. Um, and so you can, uh, there's like two, two approaches in here. You can add a trip or you can just add a quick list. So I'll start with the quick list um, and you can add a quick list name. So I'm just going to call this one uh, Micah because, you know, why wouldn't I? Um, and then I can specify, you know, uh, it's a hotel and a cruise uh, and there's an airplane and a motorcycle mm -hmm. um, and there's clothes and beach and some photography and definitely some hiking because we're talking about Micah here. Absolutely. Yes, I can do laundry or no, I can't. And also uh, there is the option to add travelers, which is uh, a with a, an in-app subscription. But then when I create this, it will just create a quick list for me. Um, it says Bon Voyage. Um, and it's automatically oh. just added a whole bunch of stuff straight off the bat. So it's got uh, a belt and bras and casual shirts, dresses, heavy coat, light jacket, um, you know, hotel. Have you got your reservation? Might be a good idea to double check that. Cruise, have you booked it? Have you got gloves? Have you got a power strip? Seasickness pills? Airplane, do you have your boarding pass? Have you checked your travel restrictions? Have you got travel insurance? Which uh, is actually linking out uh, to one well, of their sponsors and checking travel restrictions also uh, links out to a website. Uh, so that is uh, one of the ways to do this. And the other way is to add a trip. So when I add uh, a trip, then I can choose a single destination or multiple destinations and I can specify the dates and business or leisure. So I could go to Cornwall, for example, which is here in the UK. There's also a Cornwall in Ontario, Canada, apparently, and mm. another one in New York. Cornwall, uh, I'll New go to York. the one in the UK. <laughs> Um, and uh, I'm going to say that I'm going to go from Saturday to Sunday. So it's one night and it's showing me this one night and I'm going to specify that it's leisure. And now I can go ahead and specify uh, my activities and accommodation types um, and so on. So I'm going to say that I'm going to go stay in a hotel and I am driving. It's got my essentials and clothes and toiletries already packed, uh, selected. Um, now I could say swimming, but this is the UK in March. That feels like it's going to be really cold, so I'll skip that. I could put it under winter sports, I suppose. I'm dead curious. Um, and I can could you also... please choose music festival? I just am so curious what they have for that. Yeah, sure. Uh, <laughs> Maybe I mean, it'll be sunblock. Not glass to break or download uh, or anything like that. But let's see. Uh, and then uh, it's got you know it's reminding me to uh, check everything off. Yes, I, I'm aware. But then 
It'll Ooh, show me weather. the weather. It shows me the weather <gasps> at the top, Ooh. which is really important when you're planning for a trip, right? And you're making a packing list. You need to know what the weather's going to be. Um, and, um, and it's you not know, it's got just. I, you would, sorry to interrupt, but I just I like that as you point out, it's not just things you need to pack. It's also reminders of things you should do, like under the photography uh-huh. section where it says clear out those memory cards. That's yeah, very yeah. clever. Yep. So um, here uh, in the to-do list, it's saying book your hotel, close all your windows. Definitely a good idea. Uh, empty your camera memory cards. So it's got all my toiletries and my hairbrush and my makeup bag and things like that. My clothes again, my essentials, including a book. Of course, it's got a book in there and my house key and my iPhone is on here and a charger for my phone. Uh, it's also got swimsuit, swimsuit cover up for my hotel, my car keys. If I am driving somewhere, I definitely need my car keys. Yes, it's obvious. But if it's on the list and you've checked it off, then you've definitely got it. Um, and then for the music festival, <laughs> because Mike was curious, it has a disguise. It also has, and I feel like this one is more important, earplugs. Yes. Uh, because if you're going to a music festival, you should have earplugs so that you don't damage your hearing. It'll also show me nearby attractions because I specified my location. Um, so uh, it's... Uh, if for some reason it's popped up something in Mumbai, I think that's because I have uh, some blocking on my network um, here. But then I can also, if I uh, subscribe uh, to the uh, plan, then I can customize all of these default lists. Um, and I can synchronize with TripIt, which is one of my travel planning Ooh. apps of choice, which we will talk about in our next episode because I feel like that is really nice. Now, one of the things I love about this is the purchase can be shared with your family group. So if you subscribe to this, it's not just you that can use it. Everybody in your family, your Apple iCloud family, that is, can also use this and benefit from it. And you can synchronize it between all of your devices. So you can use this on your iPhone, your iPad, and your Mac. There is no uh, Apple TV version, but I'm not sure how useful an Apple TV <laughs> packing list would be. Uh, maybe popping everything up, uh, but you get an eight-day weather forecast uh, and things like that as well. Um, and multi-destination trips. So if you're traveling to, I don't know, uh, San Francisco and then uh, Portland and then New York and then Paris, then you could add a multi-destination uh, trip. Uh, which I think would involve a lot of time on planes. Yeah, I was going to say, and at that point, you probably have someone doing all of the packing for you if you're you're paying to go to those places all together. Hopefully, (laughs) yes. Yeah. So uh, obviously there's there's options here. You can print this. You can uh, there's an option to keep your screen on because there's nothing more frustrating than you're trying to pack and look at your phone or device (laughs) and it turns off the like the screen just as you're like, wait, sucks seven. Wait. Did that say seven or 77? Wait, I don't think I need 77 <laughs> pairs of socks. Um, but, you know, there's there's the option to keep the screen always on. Uh, you can share this. You can uh, order the list so you can specify what things should come first. So, for example, you might want to put uh, motorcycling right at the top before everything else um, as a category. Um, or you can just alphabetize everything, which is my preferred way of dealing with it. Uh, yeah, you can filter for just unpacked items or packed items uh, and packed items pro tip if you're traveling and you've got packed stuff like keep your packing list take it with you and then you can check off the stuff like or uncheck it in this case on your way home to yep. make sure you haven't lost anything because you know that's the point of a list right making sure that you don't lose the things that you wanted to keep track of absolutely and speaking of making lists, I thought I'd round out by showing some of the functionality that's available within uh, the notes app and as Rosemary's mentioned the reminders app so I have a note here on my iPhone, and one of the first things that you can do is you can create a checklist. So I could, for example, have shoes, socks, uh, a disguise, which is apparently necessary, uh, sunblock, and uh, headphones. And then, whoops, if I can spell that correctly. Yes. Uh, And then I can tap done and I can check all of these off. And as I check them off, they kind of sort to the bottom. That's a a feature that you can change if you'd like. Um, And whoops, now I've got all of those checked off. I can also just create a simple checklist uh, or rather a list by uh, typing a hyphen and then creating a list from there. So if you don't want something to be checked off, if you're just kind of trying to have things together, you can do that as well. Um, This app also supports uh, tables. So if, for example, you were trying to organize something, so uh, date and outfit, for example, maybe. And so on Sunday, 
uh, I want to wear this. <laughs> and on Monday, I want to wear that. And on Tuesday, I want to wear the other. And on Wednesday, of course, we wear pink. Um, so then that's the list that I could create using that. The other app, as I mentioned, is Reminders. And with Reminders, you can have a to-do list. And we've talked a lot about that. But Rosemary was talking about the groceries list. So here I could say carrots and eggs and celery and milk and nachos bananas and bananas yes and uh, rhubarb <laughs> and strawberries and then um well i guess i've not done it oh i've not uh, made this into an actual groceries list and so if i were to turn this into a groceries list then it would actually organize these according to the aisle uh from which from whence they hail, I guess. Um, and then, of course, like everything else, you can check them off afterwards. So these, uh, this is you know your standard built-in uh, options for little lists. But really, the list apps you want are the ones that uh, Rosemary talked about leading up to this that are far more powerful, far more purpose-built. All right, moving along to the news, I want to start by saying, uh, thanks to ScooterX in the live chat, um, don't forget to update your devices, your iOS devices, your iPadOS devices, your macOS devices, your watchOS devices. Uh, on top of having some fun new features, which Rosemary and uh, James talked about, they also have security updates. So if you haven't done that yet, get on it. Get those updates in. All right. I wanted to mention um, Apple and I believe, yeah, it's Harvard, uh, several years ago or a few years ago uh, partnered for what is the Apple Watch uh, heart study. And this is a, oh, excuse me, it's the Apple Heart and Movement Study. And this is a study, again, between Harvard and Apple, using the Apple Watch to try and kind of understand how in America specifically, uh, the cardiovascular health of its citizens is, uh, how the health is, yes. And so um, what you did as part of the study was you kind of gave over your data, you gave over some of your information to the uh, researchers so that they could tabulate and um, kind of understand and group the data together. and. It's the, the study is looking at uh, the cardiovascular health of American citizens using a standard or a framework created by the American Heart Association called Life's Essential Eight. And this is a means of of scoring uh, cardiovascular health based on many different factors as opposed to just uh, what, what we've used in the past, which kind of centers around BMI, for example. And did you get your 30 minutes of exercise? This looks at several factors um, for how much movement you've done, um, what kind of exercises you've done, and aims uh, to encourage folks who are participating who are you know trying to hold to this to get at least 150 minutes per week of moderate aerobic activity or 75 minutes per week of vigorous aerobic activity or a combination of both as well as muscle strengthening activities for at least two days per week now um the data um had to be, it says all individuals with at least six weeks of activity days over the 12 months, so uh, over 2023, were analyzed, and that meant that there were 92,793 participants. I'm actually surprised that it's as few as that, because I, I just thought it would be more. Um, anyway, 92,793 participants were looked at, and what uh, they did was tabulate it to determine um, who is getting 
at least 150 minutes of aerobic activity in what places in the United States? And Massachusetts, New York, and Connecticut ranked highest. They were the states with the highest proportion of participants meeting the aerobic guideline. Oklahoma, Louisiana, and Mississippi ranked at the bottom. Now, what's important to keep in mind is that Massachusetts, New York, and Connecticut are also states that are more likely to have uh, high-income individuals, um, to have folks who maybe have more, because they are, in in some cases, high-income individuals, uh, are more likely to have access to more health services, are more likely to have more access access to uh, free time that can provide them with the, the time that they need for that kind of exercise. There are a lot of factors, and this study points that out. Um, It can be the distribution of participants in each state, whether they live in rural or metropolitan areas, income levels, outdoor access, and and many other things. But it is an interesting study. Um, There's a lot of of data. I I didn't want to go into all of it because there are quite a few different breakdowns of everything, including uh, not just that 150 minutes of aerobic exercise, but also those who are uh, getting in the strength exercises, how cardio fitness and activity levels uh, compare. So whether activity does relate to um, the health, the the cardio fitness health. With this graph, it, it does actually try to see, is there a comparison between average exercise done and whether the cardio fitness level raised or lowered um, over time? And then also um, maybe do they work out at different times of day if they have higher cardio fitness levels? And those are the kinds of data points that, you know, you don't just you you get access to you get to understand because you have so much information to work with so you can look at strange trends like maybe depending on uh what time of day it is they are more likely to uh have longer workouts or are more likely to work out regularly and it seems that folks who exercised at 8 a.m local time wherever that happened to be uh, had above average um, fitness more often than any other uh, area. Fascinating. I do not work out in the mm-hmm. morning. I work out in the evening. So don't know what that means. Uh, apparently I'm doing it wrong. Anyway, let's uh, move on though. Uh, happy heart month, et cetera, et cetera. Go check out the study to learn more about that. Let's talk about uh, a change that's coming in the EU. So we've talked a lot about, uh, and and we'll continue, I think, to talk about the changes implemented uh, for Apple users in the European Union uh, based on the DMA and what effect that has on uh, Apple's software and, and other services in the in that location and apple has been listening to developers and probably also the european union itself about complaints and suggestions and comments etc and on march 12th as we record this show apple uh released an update to developers talking about some upcoming flexibility that will take place in these changes in the eu so uh, for developers who agree to the addendum and you know work with those alternative terms, um, there are new options uh, call, including the alternative app marketplace. So these uh, this says marketplaces can choose to offer a catalog of apps solely from the developer of the marketplace. So in that way, it, in in other words, they don't need to offer apps that are from other developers in the marketplace. They can just offer apps that are solely from that one developer. And then uh, another change is linking out to purchase. So when directing users to complete a transaction for digital goods or services on an external web page, developers can choose how to design promotions, discounts, and other deals. The Apple provided design templates, which are optimized for key purchase and promotional use cases, are now optional. So before Apple said that if you wanted to talk about promotions, discounts, and other deals, you had to do it with 
this special Apple uh, design template. Now it is up to the developer or the, the, uh, the organization to choose how mm -hmm. they market that. But more importantly, uh, leading up to this, it was not going to be possible for developers to offer iOS apps or iPadOS apps from a website that web distribution was not a possibility. And that's kind of big because right now on my Mac, I could go to a website and I could download an app and I often do, and I'm able to launch that app on my Mac and use that app just as I want. But with the iPhone and with the iPad, that's not something that's possible with a few caveats. Um, and that was something that this EU change kind of, I think developers were hoping to see that much like the way of the Mac, we would be able to do that on iOS, iPadOS. So that is going to be possible. Um, Apple says that a software update later this spring will let authorized developers distribute their iOS apps to, again, EU users directly from a website owned by the developer. So there are going to be lots of rules and guidelines, I'm sure. They're going to have to prove that it's truly their website. They're going to have to still go through the process because there are APIs that facilitate the distribution of these apps. You also have to properly integrate with system functionality, and you have to... Um, integrate in such a way that a user is able to not only uh, get the app, but also back up and restore the app if they restore their device, which I think is great. So that means that I don't have to go hunting for that app uh, again to try and find it. If I have an iCloud backup or a local backup, that app will be returned to my device uh, just as I would expect it to be. I kind of want that functionality on the Mac, um, mm. which I can do through other means, but just to have it built in would be great because there are ways with um, uh, Homebrew to pull that off. But that's, again, that's fiddly in comparison to this where it's mm -hmm. like, hey, if you do your backup, it'll restore all of those apps um, in in the new version uh, and I assume with all of the kind of subscriptions and stuff in place. So pretty cool. Um, that is going to do it for the news section. Uh, I can hear the music because it's time for Shortcuts Corner. This is Shortcuts Corner, the part of the show where you write in with your shortcuts requests. And Rosemary Orchard, our shortcuts expert, provides a response. Uh, we have a Shortcuts Corner request from Darren, who so kindly writes, Love the show and love you too. Aww. I'm looking for a shortcut for my action button. For those who don't know, on the new iPhone uh, 15 Pro and Pro Max, there is a third button uh, on the side where the volume down and volume up buttons are. That third button is called the action button. And much like the action button on the Apple Watch Ultra, it is a button that you can sort of program to do what you want. And so many people do cool things with their action button. Here is what Darren says. Uh, I want, I'm looking for a shortcut for my action button that one, turns on assistive touch. I use it as a floating shutter. One tap raises the volume. Two, opens the camera to photo. And when I'm done, I want the second press of the action button to three, turn off assistive touch, and four, go to my home screen. My idea is to check if assistive touch is on. That would mean to run steps three and four, and if it's off, then run one and two. But I can't seem to find any way to do this. The if function doesn't seem to be able to determine if the camera app is open or if assistive touch is on. Maybe there's another way I'm just not thinking about. Really would appreciate your help. Longtime Twit and Leo fan and Twit and Club Twit member. Thank you for your support, Darren. Um, and it's good that you're a Club Twit member because otherwise you wouldn't see the visuals of Rosemary as uh, she talks about this. Although 
This is an interesting one. Hmm. This is indeed an interesting one because, uh, as Darren has correctly pointed out, there is no way to like find out if assistive touch is on. There's no way to find out if the camera is open. And I did double check. So there is a great action in Shortcuts uh, called Get What's On Screen. So I have set up a, a little shortcut here, which I've associated with my action button um, and it's just called camera assistive touch um, and it says get what's on screen and then it's going to show me what's on screen in quick look so I've got my camera right here I'm pointing my camera at a very uh, brightly colored keyboard I press and hold my action button there's nothing there so it can get what's on screen but it can only get what's on screen in certain circumstances and that's kind of a little bit frustrating so there is uh, another app uh, which uh, adds extra shortcuts actions um, and it's, hey, is accessibility feature on? And I was like, perfect. This is what Darren needs. I'll link him to the app. At the bottom of the app description, uh, the action description, it's unfortunately not possible to check for assistive touch and guided access. Dang it. All right. In that case, we're going to go and we're going to do this the way that I think that is the most sensible to do this. We're going to add a helper action from a lovely helper app, which is free to download called Data Jar. OK, so Data Jar is uh, an app that allows you to basically just store data in, in a jar. You can be as organized or as disorganized as you like. Um, and so what I am going to do is I am going uh, to uh, create uh, something called uh, my assistive uh, touch uh, helper. So I'm, I'm just going to call this a uh, helper for now. Um, and I am going uh, oops, uh, not to do that. <laughs> um, and uh, that is, uh, I was very close. I wanted the, the get action. There we go. So I'm going to get the value for helper. Okay, and what this will do is at the moment, it will say, hey, there's nothing there. Well, that's a problem. So we're going to expand this action. And if value does not exist, uh, then I am just going to pop in a little nothing. Um, and what I will do is uh, there is a lovely action in shortcuts. Sometimes scripting actions is called nothing. Okay, and it literally is just intended to help you, you know, have blank things running around. So if there's nothing there, it's going to give me nothing. Great. So now I can add my if action. Um, and so I can say, okay, if value has any value. So if my helper has any value, then we are going to turn on assistive touch, dun, 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 set assistive touch, pop that in here. It's set to turn on. And you know what? I'm going to be smart. I'm going to copy that and I'm going to paste this into the otherwise right now. And I'm going to toggle that to off by just tapping on the uh, off. If you uh, tap on the turn, by the way, folks, you can change this to toggle. But then, you know, like when you've got a multi-way light switch where you've got two or more light switches controlling one light, you can't look at the light switch and know whether or not the light is on by the light switch. You have to look at the light itself. Yeah, if you're toggling, then it's kind of like you're blind and you're just flipping the light switch on and off and you have no idea if it's actually turning your light on and off. Uh, so I always prefer to use explicit turn on or turn off actions. Okay, and then we're going to add a lovely open uh, action. And I'm just going to double check because I know that a lot of the apps added uh, things recently. There we go. So there is an open camera action. And this one is specific to the camera app. Okay, it's not using the open app action. This is open camera. And you can specify how you want the camera to open. So you can specify in this case, as Darren wanted to open in photo mode. Okay, and then we can uh, go to our home screen at the end of the other action. So there is a scripting action called go to home screen. Now we need to just do a little bit of uh, management here um, because we're getting a value from DataJar, but we're not setting a value in DataJar. Mm, that's the trick. So we're going to set our helper to on. Oops. Um, and what I will just need to do is I just need to add a text action here uh, so that I can specify what I want it to be. And I'm just going to say, hey, it's on. So it's running right now. That's all good. Um, and then I will just copy this and paste this below and change that to nothing. So what it does at the start, it's got a nothing action and then it's getting the value for our helper from data jar. Okay, this is a data jar action. Then it says, hey, if that value from data jar has any value, ha does not have any value, is what it should say, turn on assistive touch. 
open the camera and set our little helper to on. Okay. And then if the value does, uh, you know, if we're, if our helper has some value, so it's on, we want to turn off assistive touch and go to the home screen. Okay. So I'm going to tap done there and I'm going to run my action button. So ta-da, it has open my camera and assistive touch is on. It's floating in the uh, uh, bottom uh, top uh, left there. And now if I press and hold this, then it should turn off assistive touch and the go to home screen bit is uh, unfortunately not perfect because it doesn't work from the camera, but it will at least, or it should turn off your assistive touch for you. So that is how you can do that. Now I did have an idea, which I wanted to run by you, Micah, because I thought of something else that could be done, which seemed to me uh, that it could be quite useful. Mm -hmm. uh, it's just add some shortcuts uh, automations for when you open the camera, just turn on assistive touch. <gasps> and when you close the camera app, turn yes. off assistive touch. That's because if you so do that, better. then if you open the camera from anywhere, if you open it from your lock screen, if you open it from the control center, if somebody else opens it, then you've got assistive touch always. So then all you have to do is open the camera. I love Done. that. Yeah, that's a great solution. Um, yeah. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> that, yeah. that takes yeah. care of it. So, I'll just quickly show folks uh, how you can create those automations. So in the automation tab in shortcuts, um, then you can actually go down to da -da 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 -da, where it is when app is open and then you can choose. There we go. And so if I choose bom, 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 where did the camera go? I've got too many apps here. I really need to clean these up. So when camera is opened, run immediately um, and we're going to create separate uh, automations here uh, and I'll just create a blank automation and assistive touch. Oops. There we go. Uh, set assistive touch on, and I'll just copy that. Done. And then when uh, app is closed, there we go. And make sure you uncheck the is opened on the second one. Camera. Da, da, da. Done. And I'm going to run that immediately. And I've created a blank automation here. Um, and I'm just going to paste. Below, I did a little uh, oops uh, hack there. I just added an action to make it easy to paste. So there we go. When camera is closed, turn off. And now if I open my camera, then assistive touch has popped up. I can see it. I don't know if you can see it no, on screen. We don't see but it. I, oh, there, there it goes in the top left. Yep. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah. It took a moment to, to appear, uh, but yeah, it's there. And now when I uh, close uh, the camera, it'll take a little moment to run, but bam, it's gone. That's so, so much. Beautiful. Yeah. So then all you probably want to do with uh, your your action button, uh, Darren, is open camera. That, that, that'll be it. Nice and simple and uh, a different, a couple of different ways of doing things. But I did think it would be useful to show folks how you can use data jar um, or something similar to Box Pro, which is what the apps uh, I've worked on yeah. and work on um, to store variables so that you can keep that data around for the next time you run a shortcut. But there's also other ways to solve this problem. Toolbox Pro is fantastic, and I love it. Um, but I love that you were able to, that was such a simp simplified way of doing it. And so now, yeah, Darren, you've got how to do it the hard way, maybe for a future project that comes in mind, but the, the simpler kind of cleaner way is there as well. Folks, that is going to bring us to the end of this episode of iOS Today. If you have comments, questions, concerns, et cetera, you can send those to iOSToday at twit.tv. I talked to Rosemary about this and... I think we're going to consider um, opening up non-shortcuts questions again. So feedback and questions may become a segment again going forward because of how we record this show. Sometimes the news can get a little stale and we know that a lot of you do have questions and you may have been going, well, I've got a question, but it's not exactly me looking for a shortcut. How do I? So if you do have a question, that's just a question. It's not specific to shortcuts corner. You can go ahead and send that to iOS today at twit.tv. And if you've asked a question in the past, that was about short or that was not a shortcuts corner and you've never had it answered, feel free to send that into us again because we're kind of going to be looking at it anew as we continue to uh, put out the show for you. So again, iOS today at twit.tv is where you can uh, send those questions. Uh, Rosemary, if folks want to follow you online and check out all the great work you're doing, where do they go to do that? 
Well, the best place to go is to rosemaryorchard.com, which has got links to uh, podcasts, apps, uh, books, etc., where you can find me. And of course, there's all the social media at the bottom. But you can also find me hanging out in the Club Twit Discord. I always keep an eye on the uh, live chat during the show and in the uh, posts that pop up in the iOS Today forum there. What about you, Micah? You can find me at Micah Sargent on many a social media network, or you can head to chihuahua.coffee. That's C-H-I-H-U-A-H-U-A.coffee, where I've got links to the places I'm most active online. Uh, And remember uh, to... Oh, if you are listening to this, uh, the audio version that's out in the public now, um, then... Consider joining Club Twit at twit.tv slash Club Twit. $7 a month, $84 a year. When you join the club, you will gain access to the video version of this show, plus so much more. Every single Twitch show ad-free, uh, special bonus contents in the Twit Plus bonus feed, access to the Discord server where you can hang out with us and other uh, Club Twit members, and also a number of exclusive video shows are there as well. Hands on Mac, hands on Windows, home theater geeks. It's a great full featured package and so for those of you listening to the audio version in the public that is how you get the rest of the story Uh, thank you all for tuning in and we will see you again next time for another episode of ios today bye-bye